Okay, the purpose of this second presentation, or part two of this introduction to phonetics and phonology, is to talk about a couple of the issues within phonology that um, kind of get to, to how phonology can be helpful in understanding language. So we're going to talk about minimal pairs and, phonolo and some phonological processes. Um, as we go through this, I'm going to assume that you are relatively familiar with the IPA uh, characters and that you're reasonably comfortable with them. I don't expect you to have mastered them, but I'll be, I'll be using those in this presentation. So you'll certainly want to have the IPA chart in front of you. And if um, anything in here seems to give you problems, then, then go back and take a look at the exercises and, and, or, or ask me if you have questions about things that aren't making sense. So when we talk about um, phonology, or at least when we talked about it in the last lecture, I said that phonology studies the sounds which make a difference. And I want to say a little bit more to clarify that now, um, because it, it, all sound differences make a difference, but, but in what sense does, is that difference important? So for instance, if, you, um, if you've taken a Spanish class, or you walk into a Spanish class, and you see the word um, para, P-A-R-A, -A, which one of its meanings is, is for, and you're an English speaker, and you're probably going to pronounce that word para with an aspirated P, that's what that small h indicates, and a very English sounding R, para, right? And that's, that's an acceptable pronunciation, but it's going to sound um, like you're an English speaker. It's, you're, you'll have an English accent. If you hear a native Spanish speaker saying the word, you'll hear them say something closer to para, with an unaspirated P, notice the, the aspiration's not there, and also the, um, the R is really an alveolar flap, the same thing that we saw in English in words like better and little. All right? Now the important thing to notice is that the differences between these two pronunciations, para and para, is not a difference in meaning. Both pronunciations mean the same thing, one just makes you sound like you have an, an accent. So when we talk about phonology studying which sounds make a difference, we really mean the differences in, in meaning. And that brings us to the, the, one of the terms that will become really important, is, and that is phoneme. A phoneme is the smallest unit of sound in a language that can make a difference in the meaning of a word. So for instance, um, an English unaspirated P and an English aspirated P don't make a difference in, in meaning. So in English, the unaspirated P and the aspirated P, and I'm really exaggerating the aspiration there, but those don't make a difference in meaning. They are not different phonemes. In some languages, they are different phonemes. And I'm making up a word, but you could say pat and pat, um, and those would be different words with different meanings. Uh, another example of, of different sounds that may or may not make a phonemic difference is from the, the movie um, Lost in Translation, if, if you've seen that. And if, and if you haven't, you should. It's, it's pretty funny. Um, but there's a scene in which there's a woman who's asking Bill Murray to, to lip her stockings. And he has no idea what she's talking about. He's being confused. The confusion arises beca because in Japanese, the er and the ul sounds don't make a difference in meaning. And so a word might be pronounced with an er or an ul, and that won't change the, the, the meaning of the word. Whereas, of course, in English, it does. I'll give you a, a, a third example of the sorts of sounds that might or might not make a difference. In Spanish has no z sound. Um, and I know you're going to immediately object if you've taken even the first day of a Spanish class. Um, the Spanish language does have an alphabet. Uh, excuse me, the Spanish alphabet does have uh, a letter z in it. But what I mean is that the, in Spanish, the s and the z sound, the voiceless and the voiced alveolar fricatives, don't make a meaningful difference. Spanish has no z, no voiced alveolar fricative as a phoneme. Just real quick, a couple side notes. Um, you'll see me indicate sounds sometimes in square brackets and sometimes in angle brackets. Um, and the square brackets indicate the actual sounds, the, the phonetic articulation of a sound. The angle brackets indicate phonemes. That is kind of the, the idea of the sound in our head. You don't need to be able to use the angle brackets and the square brackets consistently, but I do want you to know what I'm doing so that when you, when you see it, you understand what's going on. The second note, as, as I indicated, the Spanish alphabet does have a letter Z, but there's no Z phoneme. In fact, the, the letter in the alphabet is pronounced as zeta, uh, or if you're from Spain, as theta. So there's no there's no zeta. If you say that again, you'll sound like you have an, an English accent. What this means.